So we're going to look real quick today at um, strict mode and the use strict uh, directive that can be used um, when we do our JavaScript. And essentially this is used to tell the browser to throw errors if uh, we break some of, uh, some of the things that strict mode disallows. And the easiest way to, to look at that is to go over some of the things that uh, that are disallowed. And um, we should mention this is for EC5 uh, compliant browsers. And using this, uh, using this use strict uh, string literal here, it's just going to simply get ignored by EC3 browsers, older browsers. So it won't cause problems. Um, there may be some confusion though where uh, Whereas we usually have issues when we go back to older pro uh, browsers, we might actually have the opposite where we cause something to fail in newer browsers because we're using strict. So let's just uh, dive in and uh, look at um, this. First thing I wanted to show was I had a document. I downloaded the uh, ECMAScript 262 version 5 that was published in July, I think, or June of 2011. Anyway, um, the, there's a section towards the back, a strict mode of ECMAScript. And this is getting really into the, the details of, of, of the real spec. But you can also uh, Google John Rezig or Nicholas Zakis and also uh, use strict, like John Rezig, use script strict and you'll find some good articles. Uh, Effective JavaScript also has have this book here. Effective JavaScript. This book has some good stuff on it too. Um, and probably all over the place but if we look at the, the, the spec itself um, let's see here's one we'll just pick out for strict mode functions if an arguments object is created the binding uh, the binding of the local identifier arguments to the arguments object is immutable and hence may not be the target of an assignment expression. So there's a, so the real nitty gritty and everything is in here. It's not too big if you want to read the, the, the spec itself or you can look at those articles. But we're going to just go through real quickly at uh, examples of this stuff. So let's look at the uh, arguments first, I guess. Um, so let's create a function. What happened here? I am doing this outside of my script. <laughs> okay, so if we do use script, I get my nice syntax highlighting now. Okay, so let's um, do this. Let's create a function and let's try to redefine arguments. Uh, okay, and now if we're in strict and we go to latest version of Chrome, uh, I should have gotten an error, but what am I doing here? Make sure I'm looking at the right guy. Okay. <clears throat> I think I need to leave that in there just because it's so funny. Okay, variable name may not be eval or argument. So, sensibly, if we said our eval equals yo, then this would also fail. In fact, we could just take this out of the function, use strict. If we don't use strict, right? So, we can't use eval and we can't redefine arguments in a function. What else does it do? So the other thing is, is um, you can't inadvertently do a, a, a no var, right? So this will work without throwing an error. But if we put use strict, then it'll throw an error. Uh, it's not defined. And then if we simply throw the var back in there, we're good to go. What else? Um, there's a 
uh, type coercion of this, if you're in a function and you say this name, let's just say this guy took a name equals name, and uh, let's say we'd already defined a window name equals Rob. Ah. And let's just say we call this with foo of John. Okay, so we cannot set the property name of undefined. If, and if we don't use strict, we, uh, when we just call a function directly, we expect it to use the window. And it does here, right? And so we could also say window.name. Uh, we could say console log window name, and this should be John, right? Um, but not when we do use strict, we get the error, okay? We won't even get there. Okay, so the other thing, the other way this could happen is let's say this is a, uh, a constructor, so we'll just leave it as foo and um, rf equals uh, foo. Okay, so this time we're calling it as a constructor. Or we're defining it meant to be a constructor, but we omit the new. So we're really supposed to do this, but we forget, right? So what happens here? We get the same problem, right? If we do use new, it should work, because now, as you recall, when you have a function constructor, which happens when you use the new keyword before a function call, you get an empty object created representing the instance and within the function it's represented uh, by this and it's returned so what's this here is actually returned and stuffed into f so this should work no errors right and um, the other thing is if you have uh, <clears throat> If you use the ECMAScript 5 uh, define property, you can define an immutable property. So let's say we have a person, empty object, and we say object define property person, and we're going to say it has a name, and we're going to say that the um, that the name is immutable. You can't write to it. Uh, whoops and <clears throat> we'll say it's always going to be my name Rob okay and then you're going to try to actually <clears throat> write to that name and this should throw an error because we're using strict and it does oh I did something wrong over here uh, duh, 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 duh. on line 12 unexpected token <laughs> I'm on a roll today forgot to define the name property okay so cannot assign to a read-only property okay so if again if we didn't use strict that would just slip through and actually let's see what let's console log person name in the non strict and I expect it to be Joe <clears throat> oh so it just silently doesn't work <clears throat> Which actually makes more sense than what I hypothesized. It it uh, it's it's not writable. It's read only, so it just silently fails. So what else? Oh wait a second. Yeah, it's because use strict is off. So let's turn this back on, and let's look at what happens um, when you try to delete properties that can't be deleted. That's another thing it'll prevent you from doing. So you can't delete a variable. Right, and you can't delete a function. Um, let's say delete a function. We'll actually comment this out. We're going to fail beforehand. We just want to try this first. So delete an un unqualified identifier in strict mode. That doesn't work. And neither does this. Put this on the same line. Okay, so now we're going to try to delete a function, same thing. Now if we do what's legal is you can do an object. Um, and you're allowed to delete those properties. And that's how you're actually supposed to use delete. 
so this won't cause a problem. And in fact, if we inspect this object, we expect to just see bar. So let's do this now. No error. We inspect the object, and food's been deleted. Bar still exists. <clears throat> um, just a couple more. Uh, if we, uh, oh, we said we can't use eval. We can't name something eval, but we also can't save our, uh, we can't eval a string that creates a var and then refer to it. Uh, let's say console log. Well, it'll just be undefined. It's not going to throw an error. <laughs> let's do that. And sure enough, my var is undefined. If we didn't use strict, it would be a type of, it would be a number. And if we just printed it out, it should be one, two, three, right? But using strict, this is disallowed. Okay, not even defined. Um, and we already looked at uh, overriding function arguments. So that's about all we wanted to look at for, um, you know, there's more stuff. You can look at that spec. But I created two files, a lenient file, which would be the old version of stuff, and we, we don't want to throw errors, so non-strict, and a strict file. Let's say at the top of this file we say use strict, and whatever. Let's just say this is complies, right? We have more code or whatever. But now in the lenient, we... we we want this to not be strict, and we want to uh, be able to. Uh, we want to be able to use. Um, we want to be able to do stuff that is prohibited. So var arguments, we're not supposed to be, be doing that, right? But since we're not using strict, this shouldn't cause a problem. So what happens though is if we uh, if you can imagine we were concatenating our files, um, I'm in this directory, I have this lenient file, and I have strict file. By the way, I have alias uh, grep l. Well, you can see I've got this defined here, so that's what's happening when I just type l. It really is the same as this. Okay, so, um, so let's say I concatenate the... Uh, strict one first and then the lenient this is similar to a process I might do where I concatenate all my files um, all my JavaScript files so I have just one file that goes down the wire uh, when I make my request um, we'd maybe further minify it but just to see what would happen let's say we cat the strict and the lenient we now get one file well let's actually just create a file temp.js or um, App. Well, the temp.js, and let's cat temp.js. So that would maybe be our production guy. And as you can see, um, the sloppy one, even though the, uh, it was intended that it was not going to use strict, because this use strict was defined at the top of our strict one, and we concatenated it. This is going to cause problems because now this is going to throw errors. So the solution. Well, there's many solutions. You could just say, well, all of our scripts are going to use strict or are not going to use strict, and obviously that wouldn't be a problem anymore. But um, let's say you're going to end up combining third-party JavaScript files, and this is pretty getting to be pretty normal. So really what you want to do, the workaround, is to do what's called a self-calling function or immediately invoked function expression. And uh, I'll just show you what that looks like. Uh, you wrap your function in parentheses, and then you call it immediately. Okay, so that's actually uh, that's actually a, about as small of a self-calling function as you could get. Let's uh, spread this out a little bit so you can see what's going on. Um, so these parentheses are wrapping the whole function, thus ca causing it to be a function expression. This is just your normal uh, function brackets. And then these guys are actually calling it. So what we're going to do is we're going to wrap this whole thing in a function expression. 
like this. I'm just going to take these guys and do that. And now, if we let's put a new line break here so we can see this a little bit nicer in our output, if we imagine that this was um, concatenated. Let me cat out temp. Uh, we can see that this use strict is now only going to be applied to, in fact, the strict section of the code. And sloppy can stay sloppy <clears throat> without being affected. <clears throat> so um, that's just sort of the caveat that you want to be aware of. Um, I guess I didn't say that these uh, self-calling or immediately invoking functions uh, by design, by mere being in these parentheses, will not be in global scope, so that use strict will not be visible everywhere. <clears throat> That's about it.